All right, Twitch is green. We are sending out alert one. Alert two. You got alert three? Very good. All right. So we are live. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, sports fans of all ages, to week six of League One, season 12. In just a second, we'll get into the depth chart for the Clemson Tigers, who are, shall we say, formidable. Um, but we did want to see what uh, just a just a bit of uh, some pregame screens there. So um, now, I for the depth chart, I will hand this over to Coach Specter. I am, of course, Coach Ninja, your play-by-play. -play. Coach Spector will give you his read on his opponents this week, the Clemson Tigers. Good afternoon, sports fans. Thank you for joining us. Clemson Tigers, uh, led by quarterback Kelly Bryant. Uh, he's an 85 overall, but he's got phenomenal agility and acceleration. Um, he comes into the game with more touchdowns and interceptions. Uh, he will scramble when need be and could potentially be somewhat dangerous in that. Halfback, excellent, a freshman 88, a true freshman 88, Travis Etienne, with 94 speed, 95 agility, 95 acceleration. Cannot let, get, let him get behind us. Uh, he has the potential to be explosive. We need to get, keep him contained. He's averaging 130 yards a game uh, on the ground. Uh, Receiving-wise, he's averaging 25 yards a game, so he's definitely involved in, uh, in the offense. Uh, 130 yards a game, quite good for any running back. Uh, Feaster, the backup halfback, injured. Uh, shouldn't be featured too much. Uh, it should be a one-man show out of the backfield with Etienne. Uh, not much to speak of in tight end. I don't believe that they use one. Uh, actually, that was, that was the tight end playing fullback. They don't have a fullback. Um, 288 receivers, Renfro and Kane. Uh, Renfro looks to be the one they use a little bit more. Uh, he's averaging almost 60 yards a game, and Kane averaging 72. So they balance them out. Um, but in studying game film, uh, it does appear that uh, at least today, I expect them to use Renfro a little bit more. Uh, McLeod, Ray Ray McLeod, the slot receiver, uh, contributing very little, but could be dangerous uh, out of the slot. Tight end, Milan Richard, uh, 79 overall, not really used that much. And here's where it starts to get scary. The left tackle is a 97. The left guard is an 87. The center is a 90. The right guard is a 92. And the right tackle is an 85. So left to right on the offensive line, uh, 97, 87, 90, 92, and an 85. A deadly offensive line for the Clemson Tigers. But if you thought that was bad, where do you see the defense? A 95 left end with 88 speed. He is going to keep containment on the quarterback scramble uh, to the right uh, to a minimum. And uh, he's an excellent player, obviously, Austin Bryant. Uh, right end of Cleland Farrell, uh, a 96 with 88 speed. So a 95 and a 96 at the two end positions for Clemson, uh, posing quite the problem. Uh, a 96 and a 90 at D tackle. So whether they do a three-man front or a four-man front doesn't really matter. They may be the best team that I've ever seen in the front four. In 12 seasons, I can't recall seeing three 95 and above defensive linemen on one team. You would have if you played me. Dorian O'Daniel, a 93 left outside linebacker with 91 speed, 95 agility, 95 acceleration, with 92 awareness, is going to keep passes to the flat minimized. And he will be covering the tight end on many routes. Uh, he has the capability to do that quite well. Trey Lamar, um, <laughs> a sophomore 81. Uh, yeah, that's lower than everybody else. That's perfectly capable. Uh, it doesn't look as good compared to the he-men uh, prior to him. 
an 88 junior right outside linebacker, an 87, 85, and then 282, 382s at corner. Um, so their nickel and dime sets, not too much of a drop off. Uh, the 95 awareness there for Ryan Carter at corner going to be uh, problematic for the passing game. He's an impact player, of course. Uh, secondary uh, continuing with Van Smith on 84 uh, free safety. And a human, 75, a human being playing strong safety, Tanner Muse. So if we have time to get to him, we'd like to target him. But that front four is going to make it extremely difficult. And, of course, with the, uh, with the sliders jacked up as we have them, it's going to be difficult in addition to the fact that this coaching staff has full perks for its uh, coordinators. I'm going to go over to that real quick and show you what I'm talking about. If you go to the coach info on the team that you're playing within your dynasty, you can go look at their coaches and, of course, uh, pull up Dave Sweeney and uh, see that he's stacked up on his uh, for game management um, uh, just about as, as, as well as you can be. And then, obviously, the coordinators um, completely stacked up, uh, have all the perks in the world, so all those players, those 95s, those 96s, they're going to all be 99s. There's going to be at least four, if not five, starting defensive players for Clemson that will be jacked up to 95 with these defensive perks. Uh, and then, of course, the offense as well. That offensive line is uh, going to have three 95s or above. The left tackle will be a 99. Um, we're talking about a deadly squad. Uh, so we're expecting uh, a heavy battle down in Death Valley. It's a really tough place to play. We're coming in undefeated, uh, but this is, a, this is a unique situation. This is a, a battle like we haven't had this season. So I'm going to turn it back over to Coach Ninja, and I'm going to try to play some small ball, try to eat some clock, and try to get out of here, uh, you know, survive the experience, and uh, get out of here with a win of any kind. So thanks for joining us, and here's Coach Ninja. Uh, thank you for that, uh, celebrity. Uh, as uh, anybody who knows me in real life will tell you, I believe strongly that uh, context matters. So, you know, uh, part of the reason that we broadcast this league online is because we've got six other coaches besides Coach Spector, and you know, including including myself, that uh, we all uh, gain a lot of value out of these broadcasts. We use them as game film. And they're not nearly as useful if you don't have the context for the team you're playing. So that's why we try to make sure that uh, in any game that isn't a user-user matchup, we provide uh, a good rundown of, of what we're facing so that, you know, we know, so that everybody else in this league knows. You know, you can, you can measure. I mean, if you look at the, uh, the overalls for both of these teams, I mean, an incredible points-per-game offense at 462 for the Syracuse Orange, but looking at eighth uh, in yards per game defense and fourth in rushing yards defense, and even then, you know, uh, in past yards, they're in the top third, clearly. Uh, that is a fantastic overall defense for the Clemson Tigers, and you have to take the 55 uh, points per game defense with a grain of salt because they play in the SC, oh, sorry in the ACC and that's that that's actually a, a pretty high scoring gunslinging uh, conference um, and conversely you know you look at certain things like 90 94th for 134 yards on the ground more than anything that's telling me that this season a lot of teams are getting a lot of yards on the ground that's not unimpressive to me 134 you know, in previous seasons would be a really impressive uh, yards per game on the ground. But with these sliders, with this difficulty, no. You get a lot more on the ground than you used to, and that's more realistic. That makes more sense with the speed and the agility that is in the college game. Hi, everybody. Reese Davis with you, bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Syracuse has been hitting on all because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. 
I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that itch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that itch. We claw with our fingernails for that itch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. Between living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that itch. And I know if I'm going to have any life, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now, I can't make you do it. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now, I think you're going to see a guy who will go that inch with you. Hell yeah. You're gonna see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're gonna do the same for him. That's the team, gentlemen. Spanning more than 10 successful seasons and covering the country from California, Ohio, North Carolina, and Virginia, this is League One NCAA football. Phillips has a fantastic return and gets shoestringed and clipping, which we've seen more this season than in previous seasons based on new sliders. It's going to move him back. And actually a, a real uh, uh, correction back to what it should be to the kind of things where we should be seeing more clipping. Uh, for that kind of play. Uh, definitely helpful putting uh, the Tigers on their own eight. And we see five wide. And any regular of this channel is going to recognize that play because that is the traditional first play, first down uh, play of the Syracuse Orange and previously of the Washington State Cougars, that was the five wide middle slant. And there's a reason it's traditional, it's effective. Second and one for the Tigers. It's second down now, they're just a few feet away from that first down marker. We see a single back set now. I'm sorry, I misunderstood who had the ball. That's hard to stop. Both teams are wearing orange and white, and it confused me. It is Syracuse with the ball, not Clemson. No wonder that the traditional starting offense was the traditional starting offense. This is this is what I this is what I get for you know having a couple of drinks and not eating since two p.m. Single back, tight end on the right. Not only was it a good run up the gut by Strickland, there was a lot of attention played to the block that came across from the, I think it was the right guard, uh, uh, moving back and, and getting a block that was left of the center in order to make sure that that gap was six yards instead of two and a half. And it gives a very beneficial second down. 
No one in the backfield on second and four. We see a wide open Steve Ishmael unable to cut up field. He gets two. He makes it third and two, which is super manageable. But his momentum carried him parallel to the line of scrimmage. Strickland gets first down and more. As much as coaches like third and short, no, sorry, second and short, third and short is pretty useful as well, especially if you can punish the other team with the run early. It gives you a lot of options in the later game. First down. We continue to look at what appears to be a dime package for most plays from Clemson. Phillips this time is able to catch and uh, adjust for another three yards by running upfield. Strickland gets 12 yards after a play that really looked like it was almost blown in the backfield. Uh, but I think this one's going to be useful if you come back later and look at this play and see what sort of space it gives uh, it gives uh, Syracuse as they have to res as Clemson will have to respect the halfback route out of that formation later in the game. This is the eighth play of this drive. Dungy so far, four for four, and we're seeing a shotgun split big for the first time. Dungy with zero yards after a good, uh, good crash to the middle from the uh, from from the outside by uh, by the Clemson Tigers. Speed on defense, super helpful. Second and ten in Tiger territory. We see five wide. Good coverage, good ends. Dungy does a good job to keep it to third and ten. Three man front. Oh, and a fantastic pick by Smith. First down. 
first pick of the year from the uh, Syracuse Orange. Travis Etienne slips the first tackle, only gets seven. Good, good second man and third man there from uh, from the Orange. Oh man, he's not going to appreciate that. Giving you, giving him a hard time there. Nah, Leon, Le, Le, Leon's making jokes. They're at the seven. Third down. Under heavy pressure. And it comes back around. That is a four-point tackle on the interception and then again on the sack. That saves a huge amount of points. Not only points, but momentum. Which, uh, if you were privy to the conversations within the league, which you are not, um... There's a lot of discussion about how much more momentum matters in League One this season than it has in previous ones, as we see a kick that is really close to the left upright. The Tigers really took care of business on defense that first time out. Perfect. One of the great traditions of college football is this defense and the way they play with such passion and enthusiasm in this environment. We're seeing that again today. Well, let's see if he can shake off that pick that he tossed last time out. One general rule in any game is to hold on to the ball. If you're in the negative in the turnover department, your chances of winning decrease exponentially. Ishmael making the reception behind him, uh, overcoming uh, Dungy's understandable jitters after throwing the pick. Ball on the 18. They'll spread the field here. Let's see what the defense does with a five wide outlook. Short over the middle. And he's tackled right around the 20. This time Sean Riley comes over in the drag. He makes the catch for first down and gets more yards. The line controlled the rush. Uh, that the drag route is a money route in League One right now. It has been for a while because you get three yards, and three yards is a win. Whether you're running the ball or passing the ball, if you can get three yards on every down, you're going to be successful. Dante Strickland zero yards out of the sh uh, the split, and uh, we're going to see what the Orange can do in the second quarter when they start at second and ten. An exciting first quarter comes to an end. Clemson's got a three-point lead. We're ready for more football here in quarter number two. They come out on an empty backfield. Throws complete. He's hit right away. Syracuse still working the drag route, the three yards. Strickland gets six, sorry, seven on second and ten, makes it third and manageable. You've seen a lot of five wide with Strickland in the right slot. And this time, timing goes to Steve Ishmael. And again, same play, different formation. And it's first down. This is a small ball of a different style. Small ball from the pass as opposed to small ball from the run.
Dungey under center, tight end to his right. He's got a fullback and a halfback behind him. Strickland elects to go outside. He sees that his blockers get stopped, and he makes the decision to see what yards he can get outside, knowing that he can't get any inside. The run up the gut for Dante Strickland gets eight yards and third and in inches. On third and short, Mahoney comes in and hands it off to Tyrone Perkins for first down. Executing well, but the defense is just letting them maintain possession and move the ball right down the field. They've got to try to change the ball. Be more aggressive. Short here for the orange. Tyrell Richards gets one yard but is stopped inches short on the 40-yard line of the Clemson Tigers. So it's fourth down, and the offense is still on the field. The Orange come out of the huddle looking like they're gophering it. If they snap the ball, this is one of 12 uses for the Syracuse Orange this regular season. Strickland gets the handoff and gets, and gets 10 yards, 2 feet, and 12 in, uh, 10 inches more than he needed. Uh... Absolutely a great use of one of their fourth down attempts for the Syracuse Orange. A fourth down success going to gain them a little bit of momentum in this very tight ball game. We've got 331 on the clock and it is moving. To 
And Phillips can't spin away from the receiver, but he gets five yards on first down. It's going to be second and five, 303 clock moving. Four-man front here from the Tigers. Single back from the orange. Tight end on the right. And Dungy gets hit in the backfield for a loss of three. It's going to be third and long. to the 19. Empty backfield. Empty backfield. Quarterback in the gun. Five wide receivers. He's going to try and scramble. He's in trouble. And a great clutch throw on the run under pressure just as that uh, single cut route gets away from the defender. And he comes back to get the ball. Huge play on third down. More important than kicking the field goal, trying to prevent giving the ball back to the Tigers before the end of the half. And this is the 16th play of the drive. They come out in a five-wide set. First and 10 from the 11, real close to uh, points territory. Dungy does a great job to get the ball away before he's tackled. Really can't escape either of those ends, the left or the right, the scramble. It's just a whole lot of nothing. Just give up on that play and get ready for the next down. Second down. Single back left, tight end right. Strickland does a great job on second down out of the angle route. He gets nine yards. He's making it third and one from the three. Syracuse likes the look they're getting on the offensive line there. A spread out four man. And they run it. Score is going to hold, but boy, that would be an upset. Syracuse Looks like they're ready for the kick. 
Number nine back to return. He just drills this one. He's to the 20. Tackle made at the 20. You know, we're getting so used to pinball football with a lot of points. Kind of fun to see defenses play this way. Kind of refreshing, isn't it? I mean, every single week we call games and you're seeing scores in the 30s and 40s. This is one of those low-scoring games. Which offense will get that big break? Eventually, it could be the team that wins it. With one quarter down, I really haven't seen too much separation between these two scores. And now with uh, 29 seconds left on the clock, it is up to the Orange to prevent Clemson from getting any more points before the half. And a throw out of bounds is a good start. Despite all the time in the world back in the pocket, there was nobody, and Clemson throws it out of bounds. It's third and ten. And McLeod gets the long pass for the touchdown right before the half. This guy just continues to impress me. Every time I watch this team play, he seems to come up with big plays. Trying to go up by three, they'll kick the extra point. He makes the PAT. A short three play, 80 yard run. Results in a touchdown. Right, Brad, right now, this offense is hard. And they also took advantage of some mistakes there by the defense. Evidently not. Sends it sailing downfield. He's to the team. Ishmael takes it out of the backfield. To the 20. And gets hit. The 44. And the 44 yard line, five seconds left in the half. Three timeouts for Syracuse. too much daylight between these two teams. In games like this, some players try to press too much and that can cause mistakes. Five guys will be out in the pattern as they're in the shotgun. He chucks it downfield. He chucks it downfield. And it's going the other way. And a pick before halftime for the second turnover of the game. The clock ends. It was a throwaway play to see what they could get with six seconds. And what they got was nothing. We're seeing two defenses that don't want to give an inch. 10-7, Tiger. Clemson with the ball after the half. All right, Reese and David, thanks, guys. Second half action just about ready to start here. And he got all of this one. Great kick. Etienne knees the ball down in the middle of the end zone. Looks like one team has the upper hand, then the other comes right back in to be able to regain the lead. It's going to be an exciting game. So now both teams come trotting back out onto the field. Clemson is up a field goal. He's taken down at the 28 yard line. Now we're seeing a hurry up offense from Clemson. And Kelly Bryant gets 14 yards after shedding a first tackle. Etienne falls forward for four. Bryant 
Bryant this time hitting the backfield for a loss after either a bad play action or a bad handoff. Something went awry there for Clemson. Third down, and they need to get it inside the 48. Milan Richard, 11 yards, six of them after the catch. And this time the horizontal route moves upfield for nine. Etienne tackled for six yard loss. Third and seven gives the orange a chance. Bryant has to throw it away because of the blitzing linebacker makes it fourth and seven. We're going to see a field goal formation here from Clemson. You've got to either get rid of that football or check it down or take off and run with it. The kick is up and he missed it left. No good. Every time you have a chance to finish a drive with points, you've got to capitalize. That time they couldn't come through. There's still plenty of time to keep running their offense as usual here. I don't think they need to feel any anxiety about trailing. The quarterback in the gun, empty backfield, five wide receivers in the formation. Dungey gets chased out of the pocket and has to toss it away. I don't know how anybody can throw a great pass while getting drilled like that. Second down and 10 to go. Ball on their own 29. Five wide. He's on the run. Swings it out there incomplete. Good time to bring And the pass is short. It's going to be third and 10 for the Orange and Eric Dungy. And make him feel your presence. Sometimes that's just as effective as a sack. And on third and ten, the Orange get a big play to Phillip from Dungey. 23 yards. and 10. Ball on the 48. Up the middle for a nice game. 
and Strickland gets a lucky bounce for six. So it's second down now, and they need about four yards to pick up the first. The offense going to try to open this field up, coming out in a five-wide set, and the defense counters with their dime look. Rolls to the right, heading for the corner. Steps out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. He kept the ball on that one and picked up the first down. I think it's a great decision by the quarterback here to take off and run. Seven yard line. First down. He's tackled at the 36 yard line. Strickland taking the handoff from Mahoney on first down. Doesn't get any yards. Second and ten. Ball on the 36 yard line. Green nine, green nine. Orange three, orange three. Pass complete and take Strickland out of the backfield this time for a six yard reception. Catch, then tackle, but he gets plenty of yards. It makes it third and manageable at three. is the eighth play of the drive. I got it. I got it. I got it. There are five wide receivers split out. The quarterback in the gun. Fires out to his wide out. And they make the stop at about the 15-yard line. The five-wide middle slant has been a regular passing play throughout this game, and most of those have been going to the drag route because that's what Clemson has been giving Syracuse. This time, a great read by the coach and the quarterback says, this is the ninth play of this drive. we're going to get what we need from the slant, and that one was wide open now that they were keying on the drag. The Tigers were keying on the drag, I'm sorry. Ishmael for four yards on the pitch. From the 11 yard line, second down. And the timing is perfect as Phillips goes into the window right after the receiver, uh, the, the defender who is static in order to get the catch when the ball was there. It's first and goal from the three. First and goal from the two, and they can smell the end zone. They'll line up with five wide receivers.
This one's going to be down in the end zone for a touchback. This deficit can be easily overcome, sure. But they have to be thinking if they don't get something going on this series, the burden is going to be felt by their defense. And he makes it out to about the 27-yard line. Great narrow tackle in the backfield, just one hitting the shift. Devin Butler gets up for the deflection, but not the pick. He's going to make it 4th and 17, a very important punt for the Orange. The offense really came up with a nice drive there last time out, and most of those yards came through the air. This defense needs to improve from front to back. The line needs to put more pressure on the quarterback, and the defensive backs need to stick it to these receivers with tighter coverage. And he's sacked. Here comes the pressure. Well, the defense doing a great job of getting pressure on this quarterback. That time they brought the blitz, and the defensive line was able to break through and come up with a big sack. Tremendous amount of pressure there on first down. Clock is live. Let's see if anything happens before. No. Through three quarters now, and still the defenses are shining. and they got time where the receiver could run into the catch. Big play for the Orange. And on first and two, he throws it away. The worst thing you want to do is just to throw the ball into coverage. He got away with one right there. He's very fortunate. Next time, he should just throw it away out of bounds. two it's second down they'll call a timeout here to avoid a delay a game penalty Worth spending a 
lot to make it a two-point game for the Orange. Two-score game, sorry. That's what I meant. You know it. Only three others share this secret. The kicker looks like he's ready to kick this one off. Excellent kick. And it goes into the end zone, down for a touchback. They'll take over here, ready to start a new series. And down he goes at the 26. Since the third, Etienne out of the backfield been limited by the momentum and by the needs of the Clemson Tigers. Tackle made at the 27. At this point, we have to believe that Coach Spector is only hoping that uh, the Tigers run as much of their offense through Etienne as they have been in the previous three quarters. Because two possessions down, it is not necessarily in the Tigers' favor to be running the ball this slowly. And this is the second consecutive three and out for the Tigers. A good sign for the Orange. Excellent field position for the Orange again in this second half. This time the pass is just a bit too close to the head. And the play action for points. He has three scoring tosses in the game now. What I'm noticing more and more about this guy is he's very patient with the ball, and it's resulting in some nice scores, just like we've seen today. to 10 now Syracuse over Clemson 627 to go Not much luck the last time this offense had the ball and he just gets rid of it and the screen gets blown the fuck up and the ball is thrown away it's second and 10 Ball on the 25 yard line. Quick pass. The 50. The 10. And he Butler losing the foot race. Deion Kane. The long yards after catch. Wow, an almost impossible pass to defend, and it goes for six. 
it's it's the fact that there is zero safety coverage on that defense that burns that play for points. And now Clemson's coming out to attempt the two-point. And they make it. They're behind by two scores. Ishmael gets pushed out of the 47 and good field position again for Syracuse. The problem seems to be that they can't take up enough time on offense. The offense will be hoping they can move the ball as well as they did on their last drive. You can bet this defense made some adjustments on the sideline though. I don't know if they can stop the passing attack, but they need to at least be able to slow it down. With no open receivers, Dungy gets six yards on the ground. They're about four yards away here on second down. Way to hang on the ball there for the defender. Uh, sorry, the receiver. From the 42 yard line. First down. And Dungy loses four on the option. Defender stayed home, blocking wasn't there, and down he went. for the orange. Now they're faced with another third and long as they try to convert and move those chains again. They come out in a five wide set. Going deep. It's going the other way. Can't wrap him up. He didn't throw it away under pressure, and it really cost And the long, dangerous pass gets caught by the corner instead of the wide receiver. From their own 41 yard line. First down. And it's caught. He's tackled at the 50. Come, Aaron and Atlong. 
This one will fall incomplete. That was a nice play. Anything Butler with the deflection. To prevent the offense from moving forward is always a plus. So it's third down, and they've got about two yards to go. Dangerous throw. This one's picked off. He's at the 40. He's at the 30. To the 20. To the 10. Touchdown, Syracuse. <laughs> Huge turn after the pick to get the six. Sends it sailing downfield. And it goes into the end zone, down for a touchback. So the offense will come back out onto the field, hoping for a little better result than that last pick six. This quarterback needs to be a little bit more careful because this defense is excellent on capitalizing off of mistakes. Pulls it in and stopped in his tracks with that tackle. And the screen gets tackled for only one yard game. Just under three to go in regulation. Under pressure. The third man sacks the quarterback after a couple of breaking. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. And another one gone. And another one gone. Another one bites the dust. Yeah. Hey, gonna get the blue. Another one bites the dust. Shoot up. Ball on the 20 yard line. goes out of bounds at the 27-yard line. And the Tigers have to go for it on 4th and 8 with only 2.27 left to go. They come out on an empty backfield. Tries to buy some time. And, he's taken and the pressure flushes Bryant out of the pocket and he gets tackled by the other coverage. Well, the guys are chomping at the bit down there, waiting for the game to start back up. So an empty backfield with five wide receivers. Ishmael is not covered by anyone at all. And gets and 18 yards. Five wide. Throws complete. He's got room to work. And this time Ishmael comes over in the drag and gets four in order to get it to second and goal. Less than two minutes in the fourth quarter. He's scrambling. Swings it out there incomplete. How about that play right there? Some the incomplete pass misses the touchdown. It's third and goal from the one. Get a hand on the ball to force the incompletion. The defense backed up into their own end zone. It's third and goal from the one. They'll line up with five wide receivers. Caught end zone for the touchdown. Syracuse star is shining as brightly as he ever had. It is fun.
fun to watch a quarterback do all the preparation, all the work that he needs to be able to do to put himself in a position. They hate me now. I won't stop. But I won't stop now. You can't stop. Because I can't stop now. You can hate me. You can hate me now. I hate you too. But I won't stop now. Come on. Come on. Because I can't stop now. Come on. Do it now. Let's go. This one's going to be down in the end zone for a touchback. And the defense stopped them cold on fourth down during their last drive. Nothing can impact an offense more negatively than being stopped on a series of downs. And that's what happened to this offense the last time they were out. And it's going the other way. It's the senior corner. And they make the stop. And bringing the turnover back towards them, Syracuse gets the pick. Just an outstanding pick. Great play by the defender to high point the ball, but the quarterback was. Just over a minute in the fourth quarter. They keep it on the ground with a tailback. And they hit him in the backfield. Third down, and they need to get it down to the 35. They'll spread the field with five wide. the middle he's got it huge gain and that sets him up nicely with a first and goal that makes it first and goal call me ishmael Late in the fourth quarter, this game's not even close. It's a blowout. A lot of folks have already gone home, and Herbie, I think we're going to make our dinner reservations. He gets rid of this one. The pressure that Syracuse has been bringing all night continues to prove effective against the Clemson Tigers. Well, here I think the quarterback needs to be a little bit more patient in the pocket. That way he can allow his receivers to get downfield a little bit before he throws it. Quarterback all by himself in the backfield with five wideouts. Well, a nice stop there late in the fourth quarter, but this game, quite frankly, has been over for a long time, and I'm ready for it to end. The Tigers call a timeout. That's their second of the half. 
The sack makes this a fourth and very long. Six-yard line. The offense will come out again hoping to have similar results as their last drive. I expect him to run the ball, kill the clock, and put this one in the books. Blue 14! Blue 14! Tries to fit it in there, and it'll be intercepted. A difficult game for the Syracuse Orange. It was all about the defense. It was all about what they could do to limit the momentum gain for the Tigers and make sure that their offense had a chance to get anything. Um, Ishmael getting player of the game with a relatively unproductive game. Four touchdowns on short yardage is different than 94. I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking purely in number. Uh, uh, you're right. He, he did very well in touchdowns. I'm. Th I was. I was thinking purely in the, in the amount of first downs and the amount of uh, catches and he had a lot of he had a lot of clutch catches. He did feel like he had a lot of uh, long distance. One of the things I wanted to talk about, that's why I was getting to that, is that he was very much and he was actually sort of distracted. Productive isn't the right word, but he got a lot of short yardage valuable gains and other teams focus on him in order to make the big gains for and if I had, you know, been allowed to finish the sentence I was saying. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. We do not have a double header this week. We do not have a double header this next week, as Navy will still be on a bye. But you can count on us for another Syracuse game next week. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a fan of League One.